Well, if there's one question I get asked more than any other about my tench fishing, it has to be what bait to use. Now, in some venues and some days, it really doesn't make a great deal of difference. If the fish are up for it, you'll catch them on anything. But to be honest, I've learned to my cost over the years that on the tougher venues in particular, it can make a massive difference to your catches. So I thought in this video, I'll take a look at some of my favourite tench baits and how I go about using them. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button below because there'll be some more content like this coming along soon. So let's go and have a look. Well, down the years, I think I've probably caught tench on most of the baits that are going. Um, and the key thing to remember, and which I've learned the hard way through a lot of blanking on certain venues over the years, is to think about the venue you're fishing. So it's a relatively lightly stocked, very rich water with a lot of natural food and snails, caddis larvae, bloodworm and coronamid, that kind of thing. And the chances are the tench are going to be much more fixated on feeding on natural food. And baits that more closely lim um, mimic that are likely to be much better and that's the kind of maggot, caster, uh, worm kind of fishing that you read about quite a lot these days and a lot of big, big potential get caught on. Now my favourite out of those three it has to be red maggots um, for the simple reason that a lot of my tench fishing involves travelling um, you know, quite long distances to fish gravel pits so generally I'm away for two or three nights at a time uh, it's the only way I can justify doing it because they're too far just to fish for short sessions. And I find that uh, maggots are the easiest of the three baits to keep on those kind of longer sessions. I use red maggots, generally speaking, I'll use two or three pints a day. Not a huge amount of bait, especially if that's spread over two or three rods. And generally I'll use an equal quantity of hemp, but we'll talk a bit more about hemp later. Now, I found it a really good way of storing the maggots on those trips because obviously I've got no access to a fridge. Um, when I'm away you know, fishing uh, for, for that sort of length of time. And it's a rule of thirds really. So what I do is I get a third of the bait tub full of maggots, a third of maize flour, which you can buy from most of your tackle shops, and then the top third I just leave empty, full of air. And rather than use a tub that's got holes in it, holes in the lid, I'll use one of the ones that's got a, a completely sealed lid. And the reason for that is I want to start to reduce the amount of oxygen in the tub with the maggots um, and increase the carbon dioxide because what that will do is it will slow the maggots down they'll almost go into sort of a hibernation and not wriggle but as long as you take the lid off the maggots twice a day and keep them in the shade out of the direct sunlight you'll find that when you open the tub up they'll look like they're dead but give them 10-15 minutes and they'll be wriggling again stored like that so as long as you take the lid off twice a day just to give them a breather for five minutes and give you a bit of gas exchange they'll keep for days and days like that and when you do wake them up they'll be in really good condition so a very simple thing to do now i use flavoring quite a bit on my maggots and that really depends on the time of year if the water temperature is below about 12 degrees so i'm talking now if i'm tench fishing in april i'll tend to use sweeter flavors like pineapples uh, a good one esterberry is another good one it just seems to have an edge over savoury flavours at that time of year. But as soon as the water temperature gets warmer, what I'll do is I'll swap and I'll use more shellfishy flavours like shellfish, sensor peel, monster crab. And again, when the, as the water temperature gets higher, definitely things like shellfish, sensor peel really come into their own and work very, very well. Now, there's no point putting flavourings, liquid flavourings, in with your maggots if you've got lots of maize flour or sawdust in with them. So the first thing I do when I'm about to flavour my maggots is riddle them off Take off any dead maggots or skins, then riddle off any sawdust or maize, get them as clean as I possibly can, and then add the flavour in. And generally I'm talking about half a teaspoonful per pint of maggots, no more than that. Just so you can just about smell it. You don't, it doesn't need to be overpowering, just uh, to give them a little bit of a flavour in and make them a little bit different, stand out. And that's how I use my maggots. Generally rig-wise, it's my standard helicopter rig that I'm using. Um, adrenaline oval feeder, very short hook length, generally only a couple of inches in length, size 10 or 12 hook, depending on whether I'm using two, three, four maggots. And critically, I'll fish them popped up. 
And I do that just by using a little bit of rig foam cut to size, so it looks a bit like a maggot, straight on the hook. Don't mess about with a hair normally, I just put it straight on the hook. And popping it up is pretty much critical because that means that as soon as the tension picks up that hook bait or sucks it in, the chances of it being hooked are massively increased. So good tip for you there, fish them popped up. And that's all there is to maggot fishing really. I'll combine it with hemp. And again, I don't use a lot of hemp. Tench, like barbel, are attracted by hemp, but they don't really eat it that much. They'll, they'll, they'll suck it up, blow it out again. So a small amount can go a long way. And really a pint to, or just over a pint a day is generally enough. And that's roughly, you know, one of the tins of hemp that you can buy if you don't want to prepare your own. Something like that is ideal for a, for a, a day session. If I'm going for longer, you know, I'll take a bit more. And something like one of the bigger tubs would do for two or three days quite easily. Well, if there was one tench bait that I could use all of the time, it would have to be casters. But it just, just has that one downside of they're quite difficult to keep when you're on the bank. Yeah, I've got friends who have got uh, electric or gas powered even these days, little coolers, but they're really quite expensive to buy. And the other option is to put them in a cool box um, and pack them full of lots of ice box blocks and uh, away you go. And they'll keep for a while, you know, as long as the weather's not too hot. Um, but casters, absolutely fantastic. They've got the benefit over maggots in that if you've got a lot of small fish in your venue, then they're not going to be picked up quite so much. Not completely small fish proof, but um, you'll get away uh, for a lot longer before you, you get uh, done over by the small fish compared to maggots. Um, how would I fish them? Um, pretty much the same as uh, I do uh, with the maggots on a helicopter rig. Generally I'll pop casters up and I'll do that either by using a couple of rubber casters on a size 12 or on a hair on a size 12 hook which will naturally pop up a couple of inches just where I want it. Or alternatively, what I'll do is I'll use a little bit of cork uh, on the hair and then I'll super glue three or four casters that I've just dried off with a bit of kitchen towel onto that just to make a little cluster of baits. And a good tactic for tench uh, and bream and barbel. Uh, that is just having that little cluster of, of uh, casters on the hook. The other way of fishing it is with um, a method feeder and that's uh, worked really well on a couple of venues for me. Works well at French in this one, where we'll use uh, a, a small, uh, oh, a large, sorry, um, flat method feeder uh, loaded with ground bait with just a few casters in it. And again, either real casters or more normally, to be honest, these days, just a couple of artificial casters, the rubber ones on the, on the hair, just to create a slow sinking hook bait. Very, very effective tactic that. Um, particularly on the busier waters where you're expecting more bites. Now the third of the sort of natural baits or semi-natural baits I suppose you can call them um, has to be worms um, and both dendrobenas and lobworms will work. Um, dendrobenas again a lot easier to keep if you're session fishing on the bank, quite a bit cheaper, ideal for this sort of fishing really and again very easy to fish great thing with these is they will keep as long as you keep them out of the sunlight I like to put them in some damp peat and they'll keep for ages I wash the peat off normally before I actually use them I chop them up to go in the feeder or use them on the hook and uh, yeah very very effective probably the more fashionable tench bait at the moment it's a lot of big fish being caught on uh, worm and worm kebabs at the moment and that's a very good rig to use basically it's a hair rig with two quorum quick stops on the, actually on the loop on the hair and the idea is that you can push the top quick stop through uh, your worms use one or two three chunks of worm and uh, the, the, the lower quick stop on the loop just holds them in place and stops them from, from moving too far up and, and snagging the hook so you end up with a little kebab or a little stack of, of bits of chopped worm and use similar chopped worm in the feeder with maybe a little bit of ground bait or just on its own and just fill the fill the feed a block end feeder with uh, chopped worm. Very very effective tactic. Probably about as natural as you can get, and uh, a great alternative to the to the maggot and caster. So they're the three natural natural type baits that uh, I'd recommend you give a go if you're struggling for bites when you think you should be catching. But of course, there's a lot more uh, baits that you can use, and some of them are a lot cheaper and easier to use than the semi-natural. So let's have a look at those two. Well, there can't be many venues these days that don't see quite a lot of boilies. Certainly if there's any carp in there and carp anglers about, then the chances are 
they'll be seeing lots of little round balls. And on the hungrier waters, uh, shall I say, where there's a bigger head of tench, boilies work really, really well. And effectively, all the carp anglers are pre-baiting for you, which is great. Now, the one thing I would say is that uh, while you will catch tench, especially big tench, on larger boilies, it does pay to scale down. And generally speaking, I'll use 10 or 12 mil baits um, if I'm specifically targeting the tench. Rig-wise, generally very simple. Um, a simple inline lead, ounce and a half inline lead, short braided hook length and a boilie on the bottom works pretty well. But I must say, particularly early season when the water's a bit colder and I think the tension moving around, often in mid-water, especially the males, um, a pop-up again will, will do the job. And I come about this idea really by talking to a lot of carp anglers who were catching some really, really big tension on some of the venues that I fish. And the tactic that was picking them up was generally nine times out of ten the same. And that was little choddies, 10 or 12 mil pop-ups on them. Um, and it just proved so effective. Okay, there's a lot of guys out there carp fishing with choddies that time of year. It's the go-to method. But a lot of big tench were being caught on it too. And it's a dead, dead simple little rig. And again, two inches of 10 pound fluorocarbon to a size 10 hook and a 12 mil pop-up. Again, this time I've gone for a yellow pineapple. Yellow tends to be a really good colour. And pineapple, especially that early season, good. And I'll just fish that, that little rig, again, on a helicopter setup. Pop it straight up off the swivel. And um, that's accounted for a lot of tench over the years. Now, what I'll generally do is put a scattering of hemp out. And again, just a few boilies, no more than probably 20 or 30. Um, I'm not... Uh, you know, trying to fill it in and catch a lot of fish. This is a good tactic, early season, when you're just trying to nick a fish here and there. Very, very good tactic. Now, yellow baits, I suppose the archetypal yellow bait has to be sweet corn. Um, and it seems to be a little bit forgotten about these days in, in tench fishing circles. I mean, I can remember a time, you know, many years ago now, when sweet corn was first being used a lot really um, for carp fishing and equally so for tench and these days it's, it seems to have sort of fallen off the radar of a lot of tench anglers but really really effective bait I mean to the point where I can remember when I was cruising fishing a few years ago that um, my initial plan was to use sweet corn on the hook because it was nice and visible just in, in again in uh, used with a, a flat method feeder and after the first day I had to stop using the corn just because the tench were driving me nuts. Literally within seconds of casting out I was catching the tench and it was definitely having a, a detrimental effect on the cruising fishing because I just couldn't get through the tench to them. Now the other thing I would say about sweet corn these days is again the carp anglers on a lot of venues are doing us a massive favour as tench anglers and are piling it in. Again it's become a fashionable bait to put in alongside boilies, probably more so than hemp these days. And so there aren't many cart venues up and down the country that, that aren't seeing an awful lot of maize and, and sweet corn going in. So again, capitalise on that. You don't need to use a lot. Again, a tin of, of sweet corn is more than enough for a day's fishing. I'm just going to you know, ping out a few grains, especially for margin fishing. Um, every time I get a bite or an indication, I don't need to put much out. And again, the tench you're going to be used to seeing it on those kind of venues because the cart guys are putting lots and lots of it in. So again, they're pre-baiting for us. And that's about sums it up really. There's loads more baits I could talk about. Bread flake and bread crust. Again, traditional tench baits. Very, very underused these days. If you're fishing in the margins, particularly on the float, bread flake, a fantastic way to tench bait, a nice way of catching them. Um, similarly, Meat is a great tench bait. Um, on a couple of the videos that we've done, meat's worked really well. It's just slice up a tin of luncheon meat and then use a bait punch, normally an 8 mil bait punch, to, to produce a little pellet-shaped piece of bait, and away you go. Very, very simple. Nice, bright bait meat, quite buoyant as well, so it's almost like a wafter. Very, very effective. And talking of pellets, yeah, pellets work well on, on the hungrier waters as well can be a bit iffy. Um, again, I think if the carp anglers are putting a lot in, they tend to work a lot better because there's that natural pre-baiting going on for you. And as you've seen on one of our, our other float fishing videos, we were using paste to catch tench. 
you know, pellet paste just made by grinding up some pellets, mixing it with a bit of water. Hey presto, you've got a lovely soft paste to use. So there really are lots and lots of baits that you can use for tench. I would say the critical thing to bear in mind is the type of venue that you're fishing. And after that, take your pick. I generally will have two or three different options with me. Um, even on the natural tougher venues, because if there's a lot of eels in there, then maggots, worms, casters, at night, you're going to have a lot of problems with eels picking up the bait. So I'll swap over to pop-ups or something during the night, just so I can get some rest and I'm not catching boot laces all, all the time. So there you go. I hope that was of, of interest for you. Just a quick look at some of the baits that we can use for tench. And if you enjoyed the video, please make sure you subscribe and we'll see you again soon. Thanks very much for watching. Well, it can often be a fine line between success and failure in fishing. And I find with tench, it can be the easiest fish to catch or one of the most tricky. And often, the reason for that is the bait that you use. And so I'm absolutely made up with this fantastic mail, eight pound, nine ounces, on one of my favorite baits. So I'm gonna slip him back.